Uh, so this is going to be my first story time about, as you can tell by the title, how I got terminated from a contract. When I was like writing my notes down, I was looking at it and thinking like, bro, like the whole entire story is just like odd and funny at the same time and kind of sad. But anyway, let's get straight. So this it. particular contract that I was on, um, I just prefaced it by saying it was an hour and 45 minutes from where I was staying at at the time. So it was a very long drive back and forth because I did not want to stay the night there because the area was very like rural sticks. The hotels, y'all know I'm a little bougie. The hotels was just not to my liking. And um, the hospital was small, so I was just like, I'll bite the bullet and go back, back and forth because it was a good rate. Um, when I got there, there were no black nurses on the unit except for travelers and they were all at night. And that was like, okay, it's a small rural sticks. Maybe they don't have a lot out of there, but I preface it by saying that. And um, it was a smaller hospital. So I just took that contract. Um, the assignment was very easy. I will say that we have four patients max. Um, the unit was like super small, maybe like 18 beds. So maybe four nurses, four or five nurses a night and they were getting texts. So it was a good assignment. So let's start off with dates. So before I actually started the contract, the manager had given me my schedule um, and they did like a full like two, three day orientation and I will only work on the floor once that week. Um, granted, I know that some hospitals you won't even, sometimes you won't even get a training day or whatever. So I just wanted to pick up an extra shift because I only had one training day. And the next time I worked was like almost a week later. So I just wanted to get in the swing of things sooner than later. So I had texted the manager and said, you know, let me pick up the next day after my first day. Like I'll pick up on my own. Like you don't have to train me or anything like that just so I can get a better feel for the hospital. And so she put me on a schedule. Um, first day, everything is good. I trained with the charge nurse. Like I said, they only have four patients, small unit. I already know that I would be straight. So, um, and then the acuity of the acuity of the patients were, it was like low. Um, it wasn't, I felt like it wasn't going to be a bad assignment. So the next day, actually that night before I left on my first day, that morning rather, I started to not feel well. And like my stomach was hurting. I had diarrhea, but for long story short, if you don't know me, I always have bowel issues. I probably have like IBS or something. That might be TMI. But um, I, and I wasn't feeling well. So... The next day, I was still going to come back because, mind you, this is only my second day. I could have called out, but I don't know. I feel like my, you know, I want the rapport to be good. So I was just like, I'll go to work. It wasn't like I was sick to the point where I couldn't work. So um, I show up to work and they don't even have me on the schedule. Again, remember, this is a small unit. This only three to four nurses a night. So it's not like they really need to be staffed like that. Um, everybody had already had their four patients. And the charge that I had trained with previously the night before she was there. So she was just like, well, if you're not feeling good or whatever, um, you could just stay with me. You take two patients, I'll take two patients. Because it really wasn't nowhere to put me. And they wasn't about to send me home, nor did I want to go home. I was fine with working. I even asked her, like, you can give me an assignment. And she was just like, no, no. So she checked with the manager, um, the night manager of the hospital, just to make sure everything was copacetic. She said, yeah, that's cool. So what's funny to me is like when after all that was done, we had been done passing meds, the manager came down to me and was like, um, I don't want you. She kind of said it like a odd way, like, well, if you're going to be here, you need to make sure you're working. And I'm like, what? Like, what are you talking about, lady? Like, that's why I came to work to work. And I asked, I said it just like that. Well, not I didn't say, what are you talking about, lady? But I was like, I don't understand what you're trying to say. I'm here to work. And she was like, oh, oh, you know, I'm just saying, just making sure, you know how they do. And I'm just like, okay. So I didn't think nothing of it. Um, the night went on, everything was cool. I left. So I get a text message from the floor manager saying, you shouldn't have picked up if you weren't going to work. This is a text message. So I'm like, what? So I said, what did you mean? I cut straight to the point because I thought maybe she was talking about because I was sick, which she kind of was. I'll get to it. I said, 
what are you referring to? Yes, I came to work. She was like, she texted back and said, I wish I had the text message. She texted back and was like, I was under the intention that you would pick up an assignment. And I said, um, I very well much so had those intentions, um, but I was told that I didn't have to. And when I um, asked about it, she was just like, no. And she had checked because she was like, um, well, you need to check with me before you before something like that happens. I said, I said, what what is the problem? She said, the problem is you didn't check with me. And if you were sick, you shouldn't have been at work. And I was just like, okay, I came to work. I was sick. And I didn't pick up a full assignment. Not like they needed me to. Like literally there was nowhere for me to go. And everything was fine. So I don't like talking through text message because I can feel like the tone of the conversation going somewhere. So I'm like, let me just call her to make sure I'm acting accordingly. Like I'm responding accordingly. So of course I call her. She don't pick up her phone. And she like, she texts me right back. So I'm like, oh, don't worry about it. I'm on the lake with the kids, with the family. It's no big deal. I'm like, what? At that moment, I should have known. Like <laughs> they about to be with the shit. You might not want to be here. So I was just like, what? Like, mind you, this is only my second day and like, I'm having this interaction. I'm just confused by it because I'm like, the situation was never even that serious to begin with. So I'm just like, okay, that's cool. She said it's no issue. It's no issue. All right. So a week goes by and I told y'all I didn't work the next week until like almost towards the end of the week, like probably like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So at this point, I hadn't been there since Friday the previous Friday. So the lady who trained me, um, we ended up getting kind of cool. She was, I was talking to her about like getting into travel nursing because she was a staff nurse and she was really interested in like how much we get paid and stuff like that. And I'm not the type of person to like, um, like with the whole information, I always say like <laughs> the hospitals probably don't like me because I encourage everybody to stop being a staff nurse and go be a travel nurse because it's just so much freedom in it. Um, but anyway, I was talking to her about that and kind of encouraging her, telling her like, this is what happens. This is how you apply. Not really speaking too many numbers, but just telling her like, this is what I've done so far. And I think it was the best decision of my life. So we kind of had got cool. So she had came to me a week later at my, after my first week and was just like, Hey, I just want to give you a hit. She was like, um, I just want to give you a heads up. Um, the manager had asked me, had I seen you do your hourly rounding? And I told her, like, yeah, Shannon's always up in her patient's room checking on them. And I was like, okay. And she was like, well, she had asked because she didn't see that you charted. Like, this charting was inconsistent. And I was just like, okay, no problem. I'll make sure that I'm charting it accurately, that I'm checking on my patients hourly, even though I know that I'm doing it and you verify that I have been doing it. It was my first week. That's not like a big deal to me. Like charting something like that to me, like I know that I'm always going to be checking on my patients, the type of nurse that I am. Um, and then the way that they had the unit set up, it was kind of like ICU style where you can like see into your patient's room. You can see the monitor. You can see them. It's like the glass window and stuff like that. So I always had eyes on my patients, but I was just like, why would she even ask you that? Like, why wouldn't she ask me or even just say, Hey, I was just checking charting. I seen, um, I seen a few inconsistencies. Just make sure you're charting regularly. Like that would have been, that wouldn't have been a problem. Why would she go to you? But again, I'm just like, okay, mind you, this is only my second week there. So I'm just like, okay. It's I'm a part of me is like, what's really going on? And a part of me is just like, it's not that big of a deal. Cause I'm not like a, t a person to like trip over stuff like that. I'm just like, all right, I'm about to be here for my 13 weeks and go. But that was the first time I had experienced like management in on a contract. Like I've always had a, I've done six contracts at this point. And that was the first time I ever had a encounter like that with a manager. So I was kind of like, taken aback by it and also like learning at the same time as I'm going through it. So now we're going to move on to the next issue that happened. All right. So the next issue that happened is there was a nurse, um, and amongst ourselves, uh, me and the other few black nurses were talking and 
Um, one of them had told me like, yeah, kind of watch out for her because she really iffy about travelers. And I was just like, oh, okay. Like I had never had an experience with her per se, but you know, when you can just kind of feel somebody's vibe when you around them, maybe when you in the med room together or in a supply room grabbing something like, you can kind of tell how nurses are. Like you can tell if it's a nurse who's like, oh, hey, how you doing? They introduce themselves, something like that. Or a nurse who kind of just knows you're there, but don't act like you're there kind of. Anyway. So that's the only experience I had with her, but I'm not like thinking like, that's no big deal to me. Like I'm not there to like make friends or anything like that. We're there to do a job and be friendly. And she was friendly. She wasn't overly friendly, but enough for me not to be like tripping about it. So there was this particular night, they had me float to the cath lab um, until a nurse came on at midnight. And so when a nurse came to the cath lab, um, I had asked the manager because she came down there. She was like, I really don't know what you, what I want to do with you after midnight because we're fully staffed. Um, this And let me also preface, like, this hospital had way too many travelers. Like, too many travelers and not enough patients at that. So, a lot of times people would get floated or they would be calling. Sometimes they would call people off. But this And this was their first time having travelers. So, I don't know if they were trying to figure out certain stuff. But anyway, um... Midnight comes, I go find the nurse manager. She just tells me, go back to your unit um, and be a resource nurse. So basically that just means I'm a, another tech or a tech and a nurse. Like if you get in behind and I'm not doing nothing, I'm there to help you stay afloat. Um, text, I'm there to help them do stuff. I'm a resource. Um, I don't have my own set of patients. So when people need stuff, I'm available to help which is no problem. Again, this is a smaller unit. The acuity of the patients are very low. These are walkie talkies. Um, they may have had one or two totals on a unit um, at a time. So it's not a lot. It's like, that's fine. So I was helping the tech get caught up. Um, I helped her change a patient. I was helping the tech change a patient, one of the totals. Um, and I just in being observant, I can kind of see that nurse that the lady had told me, the other nurse had told me to watch out for, I kind of seen that she was like flustered and she was going back and forth from one room and I heard that it was about a dialysis machine. Again, this is a small hospital, so they don't even have a lot of resources. You know, sometimes bigger hospitals, they have their own dialysis nurse who will come up there, hook the patient up, put them on a the machine, all of that stuff, come up, come back, take them off, all that they record, they would chart their own thing. So here, they don't have that luxury. So they may have seen a dialysis machine ever so often. So it was new to everybody. So after I had finished, after, after I had finished helping the tech change the patient, I had walked down to the room to just ask her, did she need any help? Um, to see if she needed to be caught up, if a, another patient needs, needed meds, while she figured that out. And I kid you not, as I was turning the corner into the room, she was like, I wish I got paid that much to sit around and do nothing. I automatically knew that she was talking about me. And I was just like, but I'm not sitting around doing nothing. I'm actually trying to help y'all. The charge nurse was in there, the one who I had been training with. And both of their faces turned red. Hers red from the realizing the fact that she was talking about me and I heard her. And then the charge nurse thinking to herself, like, why would this girl say this? So... I was like, the charge nurse was like, yes, that's what Shannon's here for. She's here as a resource nurse. Mind you, I let everybody know that, but she was running back and forth. So she didn't get an opportunity to hear me say that. Um, but still, just the mindset that she had, like, why would she think that? Um, and she was just like, yeah, Shannon, just trying to, like, soften the mood. She was just like, yeah, Shannon's a resource nurse. If you need anything, just ask her. And so then I said, so do you need anything? And she was like, no, I'm good. And I was just like, that was the first time I had ever experienced a staff nurse speaking badly about a travel nurse. I honestly have not experienced any bad staff nurses on any assignments that I've went to, like any of them. Most of them are very happy to have you there. They're very helpful. Um, they're very like thankful, like they cool. Like, I never experienced anybody. If they did feel that way, like, they maybe kept it to themselves. But I never experienced, like, a sense of, like, oh, you're a traveler. You got it. Like, the assignments have always been fair. If I didn't understand something, um, people have always been willing to, like, help out. Um, if I had questions, like, people were generally 
nice. So that was my first time experiencing something like that. And I've heard people say like, you know, some staffers are like envious of travelers, which I, I, I get. And I know that's not a me problem. And that's why I didn't take it personal when she was, when she said that, because I know I was like, she's not upset with me as an individual. Like she's upset with the fact that I don't know what her situation is. Maybe she can't just get up and travel. Maybe she has to worry about her kids. I think that's what it was coming from a place of. And that's why I didn't take it personal. But I did. I was like, oh, so this is what people are talking about. So that was that situation. So the next two kind of go in conjunction with each other. Um, the contract was coming to an end. I probably had two weeks left. And I was going to extend. Even though the drive was horrendous, I absolutely hate it. Like, I'm so thankful that I'm alive because there were so many mornings where I was on the road and I would fall asleep. I do not recommend that. If you get an assignment, get something close because that drive working night shift is like, dreadful and the, where i was living at at the time it was heavy traffic every single day i hated it like i would literally live 30 minutes away but the, the city that i was living in was busy so what is 30 minutes away took an hour and 45 because of traffic so anyway um i was still gonna go ahead and extend um, because it was just an easy assignment. It was just like, this is easy money. It was a, at a good rate at the time. So I was just like, that's fine. So they accepted my extension. So like I said, I had like two, three weeks left. So like a week later, my recruiter hits me up and was just like, um, have you been having any problems there? And I was just like, no, not really. Like I told y'all about the stuff before, but not enough like i'm a pretty chill person so i don't in this sense i don't let like stuff upset me or like think too deep about it so i knew that that stuff had happened but i wasn't just i was like you know like nah, nothing it was like too big much big of a deal because nothing had happened since that point oh girl had magically start being like extra nice to me remember before i told you she knew that i was there act like, like she would know that i was there but act like i wasn't there type of vibe but now she was like going out her way to say like do you need anything you okay everything going on fine so i'm just like i'm not thinking of it and i was just like no not really and she was like well they canceled your extension but they want you to fulfill your contract so basically stay my remaining two weeks and i was like huh because that, that had never happened to me. She was like, so the manager had reached out and said that a nurse had complained to her because when she came in on shift, her patient had not been changed. And so mind you, this is a hospital with low acuity patients, walkie talkies, um, not a lot of total. So, and when I say that, I'm saying that to say, you know, if you've had a, a busy assignment, you know how having majority of your patients be in total sometime and not enough text can like have on your level of care. Um, sometimes you might not get, you not may not be able to change a patient right away because you got maybe six or seven other totals. Like that's a lot. So I say that to say that, but this wasn't that. This was a, a, a unit where we had four patients. That's nothing to me. I could do that in a breeze. Everybody is just walkie-talkies, and I may have one total. So I remember that particular total, and I remember that particular night. I will say that they had very good texts at this time. So, you know, like sometimes you could go to a hospital, and you could tell right away as a nurse what texts are good and what texts aren't. Um, this hospital had very good texts. They had maybe like 12 no, I would say like eight patients a piece as text. That is like beautiful as a tech. So they were able to, as soon as that call light go off, go to the room. There is no, oh, I'm too busy, I'm overwhelmed. It was an easy assignment. So when she said that, I found it odd, one, because I'm just not that type of nurse. I stand on my word. I am not too good to go change a patient, empty out a urinal, um, go grab some ice, get a blanket i am not that nurse especially on an easy assignment now if it's a busy assignment i still will help y'all see my day in the life when i was in north carolina um y'all see my day in the life when i was on an assignment it was busy but i still helped the text as much as i could because that's what we there for to make each other's job easier i'm not too good or i feel above anything to do the work because i understand that it takes a team 
So when she said that, I was just taken aback because first, now you mess with my credibility. Like I'm not that type of nerve. And two, I know that that didn't happen. I know for a fact that that did not happen. So if the patient, and also, you know, too, like, the, I believe the, the particular patient was on TP. And if you know anything about TP, and you know your patient gonna be shitting all night. So I insist it, it, it's very well could be, I can change a, a patient at the end of the shift. And then by the time we give a report, the nurse had time to actually go in there and check the patient. The chase didn't use the bathroom again, but that doesn't mean that I didn't change the patient. So when she said that, I was just like, I, that made me mad because I hold myself to a very high standard. I take my license very serious and I genuinely care about my patients. Regardless of how may I have feel the regardless of how I may feel about the system and the business of nursing, I still take it serious about caring for my patient. That could be me, that could be my mom. You know, I treat everybody as such. So I just had no reason to not change a patient. Um, so my recruiter was like, honestly, this is kind of odd because what they're accusing you of is not something to be taken lightly. So if it was that serious, why wouldn't they just cancel your contract altogether? So the IA's department like reached out to me. I, I guess they have like a department where like conflict resolution or something like if you have an issue with a traveler in a hospital. Um, and he was just like, he said the same thing my recruiter said, like, he was like, I've been doing this for a long time. And I can tell you just from observing the statistics, like after your sixth assignment, typically your fifth or sixth assignment, you end up encountering one hospital in that time that kind of has a problem with you. He was like, I wouldn't too much worry about it because when I asked for more details, like maybe a room number, a patient, um, they hadn't gotten back out to me. And he was like, I just find that odd because of what you were doing was so bad. Like, they should have canceled your contract altogether. Like, why keep you it? And it's not like they even need you because they were overstaffed with travelers. So it would just be easier to let you go. Um, but he was like, I don't. He was like, the the the, the whole entire situation seems a, a bit odd. And he was like, but I just wouldn't worry about it. So... I didn't worry about it. However, I did reach out to the manager because if you're accusing me of something, one, you can speak to me. I don't know if they have some type of policy where managers can't speak to travelers or, or, or I don't know if they knew that they could because this was their first time having travelers. So um, I reached out to her and I was like, hey, I called her. Of course, she didn't answer. Hey, can you um give me a call back? I just wanted to talk to you. So she was like, yeah, is everything Okay. And I'm like, no, I, I just, I said, I didn't say no. I said, when you, when you get a chance today, give me a call. So she didn't call me. Um, and I waited. She was like, okay, I'm in a meeting. I'll, I'll call you. After that meeting, I gave her like a two hour window and I call her, I call her back. I text her back and was just like, Hey, just wanted to make sure, um, you were still going to call me today. And she was like, yeah, um, I'm, I got in a meeting late. I'm just trying to wrap some things up. I'll call you. So now it's six o'clock. And I haven't heard from her. So I just text her at six o'clock, maybe thinking I catch her on her drive home. And she didn't answer the phone. And she texts me back like, hey, I'm sorry. I'm going to pick the kids up from whatever. Um, is everything okay? And I was like, no, everything's not okay. Um, I would really like to talk to you. She was like, all right, once I get the kids home, I'll give you a call. So she never, long story short, she never ended up calling me. And by morning time, I had already slept on it. I'm just like, whatever. I don't care. I got two more weeks in this contract. I don't need to talk to her. It is what it is. But I really would have liked to have the conversation to know more in detail, like what exactly they were talking about, because I know that I did not leave a patient unchanged. I, it was more like me standing on my character. Like if you gonna question my character, at least have the um, courage to tell me or give me the common DCC to tell me exactly what it was. But again, two weeks, I'm not tripping. I'm about to dip. And honestly, I wasn't even, when she told me that they didn't want to extend all of a sudden, I wasn't even tripping about it because I was just like, the drive was killing me. And I was like, maybe this is a sign. Like, you can find another assignment somewhere else. Plus, you need a break. So I wasn't even honestly tripping about it. It was just like, it was just how the whole situation played out that made me be like, yeah, this is weird. So the last two weeks um, of my assignment, we had this crazy patient on a unit. Um, she had, she was one of them, you know, like when it when it's a hold up in case management, maybe it's placement or something like that. You have 
most units have a patient that has kind of just been there for months because of the system. So we had one of those patients. She had been there for almost six months um, because of insurance stuff. And when I tell you, bless her heart, but she was not the most pleasant patient to work with. And when I say that, this lady, <laughs> she was funny to me because I kind of like psych patients. But it was also kind of, I kind of felt bad for her. I did sympathize with her. But this lady would be screaming to the top of her lungs, help, help. Like, mind you, this is a small unit, so she can be heard very loud and clear. And when I say she saying this, she's yelling and she's sitting just like this. Help, help. And you go in the room and you be looking at her like, you serious right now? And when you get there, she'll be like, Hey, baby, can you bring me a milk? And you be like, what? Like, are you, like, y'all know those patients. If y'all follow the girls on TikTok when they be making these funny TikToks, like, just like that, like, crazy stuff like that. And I sympathize because she had been there for six months. She was, she wasn't a total. She had, like, an am amputated leg, but she moved around a lot. But when she didn't want to move around, she played that game. So, um... She had just been in the bed for six months. So I sympathize with her. Like, that would make anybody go crazy. Um, and so this particular night, the night I had, so I, I say that all to say, the last two weeks, I, I had been getting that patient like almost every shift. Um, because nobody really wanted to deal with her. She is like kind of like a heavy low because she does a lot. She would be calling 911, telling them we holding her hostage. Just crazy stuff. Like stuff where you got to be in there a little bit more frequently because she will just make the night miserable. She had all her sleep aids and stuff like that. But some nights they work and some days they did. So I was taking her. I didn't really mind her. Again, the way that the rooms are set up, you can literally be sitting right outside of a patient's door having a full conversation with them. So I always made sure when I every night that I took her that I would stay right next to her room. I could see her. She good. So this particular night, I probably had her like six times. My contract is about to get ready to end. I probably got like three days left. Um... She going on with her antics. She didn't call 911 already, told them we holding her hostage. She didn't been screaming all night. The thing is, she really just wants somebody to come in there and talk to her. She just wants you to sit and have a conversation. And that's cool. I can do that, but I'm not going to do that all night long. I just don't know. I don't, especially when I have other patients. I don't have the capacity to do that. So me and the so me and the tech. We were, again, they have good texts. Me and the texts were taking turns just going there when she called or just trying to calm her down, doing things to kind of mitigate her turning up that night. So this particular night, um, she decided that she was going to press on that call like oh, every second, every five seconds. And they think it's like, you can't just turn it off from the outside or you have to actually go in the room and turn off the call light. So sometimes it would just rain. So at this point, we like, all right, y'all, this is my third time recording this part. <laughs> so if I'm is not enthusiastic about it, that's why. So this is what I was getting into. So this particular night, the patient, she was, she was kind of actually kind of chill that night. Um, but we have been taking turns as we have been doing the entire time I had her between me and the tech going in there, seeing what she wants, trying to pacify her, calm her down, get her to chill. So this particular night, I have one to go take my break. And the way that the break room is um, situated, it's like several different rooms in one area. And again, it's a small unit, so you can hear conversations. So I'm sitting in the other side of the room by myself, and I hear her say like, yeah, she hasn't been getting up all night um, to go see what she wants. She just let her, she just let the call, like, go off. And mind you, this is, like, a, where you got to go in a room and cut it off. Um, but she going to, soon before you could walk out of that room, she's going to hit the call, like, again. So it's just one of those situations. You would be standing at that door, basically, before you can get out to even go sit back down. So I'm, like, I'm listening to her. I didn't even say anything because I'm, like, I'm kind of, like, shocked that it's kind of happening. And so she was, like, uh. Yeah, she don't want to do, she like, yeah, she don't want to do nothing. And I'm just, I'm like, 
a part of me like it's like she can't be talking about me but like obviously she's talking about me so she get up and she start walking down there and then i get up and i go walk down there and she come back out of the room and i was just like i was very concerned because i thought maybe she was saying that because she felt overwhelmed maybe she had a lot going on because i'm like she can't be saying that me and her both haven't been in that room we literally been crossing paths so i was just like i was like hey i heard when you said that i hadn't been answering the call like and I was like, but you know, we both been in here. Um, is everything okay? And she was like kind of taken aback. Like I didn't think she thought, I mean, obviously she didn't know that I had heard her. So she was like, huh? huh? What are you talking about? I was like, she been, she, we know she been on the call. Like we know how she is or whatever. Um, but me and you both have been there, been in the room. I just want to make sure everything is okay. Cause that's not true that I haven't been answering the call like and she was just like, oh, no, no, you know how she is. And I was like, so why did you say that? And she was like, I didn't say that. And I just looked at her like, I just looked at her like, okay. So she walked away and I went back and sat down. So I'm just like, that's stuff like that. I'm just like, what? But I'm like, I, I, looking back on it, I should have said anything because it's like, girl, you only had three days. But I was just, so I've never experienced that before, like, somebody like talking about you on a car I just I've never experienced that so I was kind of learning in the moment but anyway so tell me why two days later my recruiter called me and tell me that they canceled my contract they said you are terminated um you are not allowed to come back and I was just like what a part of me was like co not confused a part of me was just like they serious right now and a part of me was just like okay I'm not surprised. Like, it was just like, okay, whatever. What's next? Um, she told me that the manager had called and said that she, Shannon is creating conflict with the workers. And I told my recruiter the story, and she was just like, huh? And I'm just like, I'm creating the conflict because I address something. But, child, that just goes to let you know. Like, even situations like that, I don't think it was nothing wrong wrong that I did with handling the situation. Because, I, like I said, I'm a solution-based person. But at the same time, it just lets you know that, like, people be really miserable. People are not happy with their lives. And just the smallest thing will, I don't know, cause people to act in ways that you just be like really especially as adults so i didn't take it personal you know i was just like oh okay this kind of makes sense like for where i am and what's around me like it makes sense but it was just kind of weird so yes y'all that is my story of how i got terminated it's kind of weird to me and it's kind of funny at the same time like i've learned i learned a, a lesson from that actually when i posted it on instagram like a lot of y'all hit me up talking about how your contract got uh canceled for unsafe stuff or people just being stupid petty like child so it's it i it lets me know that it's not uncommon but i hope y'all enjoyed this story time um and until next time i will talk to you guys later